So you want to be a farmer? Here's seven realities of becoming a successful farmer. Stay tuned for that coming up in this one. I started thinking about this at a recent trip that I went on to visit Darby Simpson. I was at his farm for about a week earlier this month and these are seven realities of farming successfully that I noticed on that trip. Reality number one, efficiency in equipment is everything. If you don't have the right tools and you don't do things the right way, your job is going to be a lot harder than if you do things the right way and have the right equipment. I get at least an email a day from somebody saying, I'm burning out with my business. And this is not just farming, it's every business. When it comes to business, you're going to face burnout because you have to do it all. One way you can make doing it all easier is do things the right way and have the right equipment to do things. That means focusing on efficiency in all of your processes and effectiveness. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. We can't get more time. So the point of having good tools and doing everything efficiently is to make better use of the time that you do have. Reality number two, available cash is gonna control the pace. The more money that you have to put in the farm, the more money that you have to start with, asterisk, the faster your farm's gonna develop and the better it's gonna move along. I put that asterisk in there because that's assuming that you spend that money wisely. Dumping a bunch of money into a farm haphazard and just buying a bunch of stuff that you don't really need isn't the way to success. But if you approach starting a farm-based business with the right process and you buy the right equipment, that money is going to make it easier for you in the long run. It's the difference between washing your salad greens in a tote and building a bubbler. Money will make it easier. The more money that you can start with, the better. The key though is make sure you spend that money wisely. Reality number three, your ideology is gonna be sacrificed. As my good friend Curtis Stone always says, when you start farming, you're gonna to have to put your ideology in your back pocket. It's 100% true. If you start off trying to create the most idealistic farm possible, you're probably gonna face a lot of struggles along the way. And one of the big struggles is gonna be profitability. As Ethan Rowland once told me on a podcast, going for sustainability is a continuum. It's not something that you start at or it's not something that you arrive at. You gradually work towards it and you're always trying to make it better. That's how you have to approach a farm when it comes to your ideology. You have to start with what works in reality. You have to start with what makes money and try and use that money in what's working and recycle that over time to gradually work toward your ideology. Be careful starting with that ideology because it's probably not profitable and something about it probably doesn't work in reality. Reality number four, you're gonna do a lot of work that you don't wanna do and you're gonna put in a lot of long days and long hours. It's just the nature of starting a farm-based business or really any business. You have to do it all. You're gonna clean toilets, you're gonna have chickens poop on you, you're gonna be walking through pig crap. That's just part of getting the job done. It's not just all about green fields and nice sunsets out there and watching the animals walk across the landscape. There's some truly shitty jobs when it comes to farming and you as the farmer, the solopreneur, are gonna have to do a lot of those shitty jobs. Probably at the end of the day, after the end of a long hard week and on a holiday when you don't want to. Because when you're running a farm, the animals don't care what time it is or what day it is. You're always gonna have to pay attention to them and take care of them. So think about that. If you're getting into this, especially your first few years, you're committing to a lot of long hours and doing some work that you probably don't wanna do and work that's probably not why you got into farming in the first place. But if you wanna to get to that idealistic vision, this is the way through it. Long days, a lot of hard hours. Reality number five, you're gonna to have to wear multiple hats. As a solopreneur, as a business owner, you're gonna to have to do it all, whether you want to or not. Accounting, bookkeeping, marketing, sales, processing, fulfillment, production, all of it. It's all on you or your partner. But most people are gonna start out a farm, at least on this scale, with a full staff. That means you're the jack of all trades, you're wearing all the hats, you're doing it all. You might wanna get into farming because you really like pastured poultry, pigs, or growing veg, but that's only one small part of what you have to do to make a farm successful. You're gonna to have to learn to do a lot of things that you might not like to do, and you're probably gonna to have to learn a lot of skills that you don't have now. If you approach this wearing of all hats as a positive, that's the beauty of doing all this. 
process. You get to learn a lot of new things. You get to try a lot of new things. But it also ties into that last reality. You're going to do a lot of work that you don't want to do, and you're going to put in a lot of hours. Because at the end of the day, when you're tired, you're probably going to have to put in some computer time to market your product, to keep track of the books so you know where your numbers are at, to email customers to get back to them, and to think about strategies to help move more product. But this is a reality of farming, and it's a big one. You're going to have to wear all the hats. Reality number six. No matter how much you learn, you just need to go out there and do it and figure things out in the real world. I say that as a podcaster, an audiobook narrator, and somebody who's making YouTube videos. If you're going to learn everything you need to learn about farming on audiobooks, podcasts, and YouTube videos, it's not going to happen. I don't care who's teaching it, that's not going to get you everything you need to be successful. Now I can give you a good baseline to give you some broad knowledge, but a lot of that knowledge you need to apply specifically to your context your land, your marketplace, and your life. Those things are something nobody can teach. They're just up for you to figure out. So read all the books you want, listen to all the audiobooks you can, and watch all the YouTube videos that you can. But at some point, if you want to do this and be successful, you're going to have to go out there and just do it and figure it out. And that means probably making a lot of mistakes. Lastly, reality number seven, and this one ties together the previous six. If you're going to successfully run a farm, you need to have an intense amount of grit. The ability to keep going in the face of negative circumstances, the ability to keep going in the face of a ton of stress, and the ability to keep going into that unknown. When you don't necessarily know what the right choice is, what the right move is, or what you should do, you're gonna have to go into this looking to solve problems and adapt. And you need the resiliency to stay on the horse and keep riding and keep moving forward when things don't work out well and the problems that you don't solve create other problems and when you try to adapt and you can't. You're gonna get knocked down, be ready for it. You just need to be able to get back up and keep going. The whole key is just not to blow yourself up mentally, physically, or financially during the process. Without that grit though, none of it's gonna happen. There you have it, seven realities of being a successful farmer. These are things I've taken from farmers I've interviewed, farms I've been on, and they were inspired by my visit to Darby's Farm in Martinsville, Indiana. All these things are critical when it comes to farming. The key to all of them, it's not really stuff you can learn out of a book. If you're thinking about starting a farm-based business or going into any business for that matter, pay attention to these realities and make sure you're prepared for them and aware of them. If you missed them, they're listed in the comments below. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.